Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Our subject today is bradycardia and heart block. Your lecturer will be Dr. Hisham Saif, Assistant Professor of Cardiology and Director of Cardiac Electrophysiology Unit, which is concerned with the treatment of cardiac brady as well as tachyarrhythmias. We will start by defining bradycardia and heart block. By bradycardia, we mean any heart rate below 60 beat per minute in adults. As in children, they have higher rates to be considered as bradycardia. By heart block, we mean any delay or interruption of propagation of electrical impulse in cardiac conduction system, which can be associated with bradycardia or not. If we looked at the anatomy of the conducting system, the important components of the conducting system, including the sinoatrial node, which is the main pacemaker of the heart, there are around 5,000 cells, which uh, happens to, uh, to be located at the root of the superior vena cava. The second important component is the uh, AV node, the third important component is the bundle of his, which branches into the left bundle branch and the right bundle branch. The conduction system is peculiar in having the property of automaticity, which is the ability to generate spontaneous electrical impulse. If we compared the action potential of the normal myocardial cells with th that of the SE node, we can find two main differences. The first difference that the resting membrane potential is flat in the normal myocardial cells while there is a gradual upsloping in the uh, SE nodal potential. This gradual upslope will induce a spontaneous firing when it, it reaches to a certain firing uh, potential as well as we can see that there is a plateau in the uh, action potential of the normal myocardial cells which is not present in the SA nodal potential as this plateau is needed for the influx of calcium ions which is very important for the function of the normal myocardium, which is the contractility, which is not a function of the SE node or the other conducting tissue cells. Variable conductivity is another property of the conducting tissue, which uh, is represented in the following. The normal ventricular muscle rate of electrical impulse conduction is about 0.5 meter per second, while the bundle of his left and right bundle branches are able to conduct the electrical impulse at the velocity of 2 meter per second. The Purkinje fibers are able to conduct the electrical impulse at a very fast rate of 4 meter per second. This is very important for the synchronous contraction of the big ventricles. While on the other hand, the AV node has a very slow rate of conduction, which is around five centimeter per second to allow a time between the mechanical contraction of the atrium and the mechanical contraction of the ventricle to allow proper filling of the ventricles. The conducting tissue of the heart is controlled by the autonomic nervous system in the form of sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve supply. The sympathetic nerve supply supplies the atrium, the AV node, the bundle of his and the ventricles, while the parasympathetic nerve supply in the form of the vagal nerve supplies only the atrium, the AV node, but not the bundle of his, bundle branches, Purkinje fibers, or the ventricles in a phenomena which is called the vagal escape phenomena, which allows the heart to escape a very high vagal tone to prevent cardiac standstill. When it comes to the etiology of the bradyarrhythmia and the heart block, 
Degenerative heart disease being the most common cause of pacemaker implantation, which occurs in old age. Also, bradyarrhythmia and heart block can occur physiologically during sleep, severe pain, severe hypertension, and in highly trained athletes. Congenital complete heart block can occur in babies of mothers with autoimmune disease. Usually the patient is tolerant to bradyarrhythmia and pacemaker implantation will occur in early childhood, early adulthood. Also inflammatory carditis which occurs in autoimmune carditis or in viral myocarditis. Infiltrative heart disease like uh, hemochromatosis and amyloidosis is another cause of uh, heart block and bradycardia. Iatrogenic uh, bradycardia can occur by prescribing medications which slows the heart rate or induce heart block like beta blockers, calcium channel blockers and digoxin. Also it can occur due to surgical trauma during uh, uh, valve implantation or closing an AST or VST. Endocarditis is a common cause in cases of abscesses occurring around the aortic valve. Ischemic heart disease is a very important cause of bradyarrhythmia and heart block. In this entity, we have two types of uh, myocardial infarction, anterior myocardial infarction, in which bradyarrhythmia and heart block will not occur frequently, but if it happens, it, usu it is usually serious and non-reversible and requires pacemaker implantation while it occurs more frequently in inferior myocardial infarction but it is benign and transient and usually will not need pacemaker implantation also electrolyte uh, disturbance or electrolyte imbalance occurring during renal failure is another cause of bradyarrhythmia and heart block presentation of the patient with bradyarrhythmia and heart block can be very variable the patient can present with an acute presentation to the emergency department with syncope, which is due to cerebral hypoperfusion, chest pain, which is due to coronary hypoperfusion, shortness of breathing, which is due to accumulation of fluids in the lungs or uh, hypoperfusion of the muscles. The patient can also represent with subacute or chronic symptoms to the outpatient with cerebral hypoperfusion uh, inducing dizziness and muscle hypoperfusion inducing easy fatigability. Also, uh, the patients can be asymptomatic and discovered during physical examination or during ECG in cases of a patient with congenital complete heart block which are very tolerant to the bradycardia as we mentioned before investigations investigations will concentrate in two uh, directions the first direction in detection the bradycardia and the type of bradycardia and the other direction in determining the cause of bradyarrhythmia or heart block. In determining the type of heart block, 12 lead ECG is very important in diagnosing, diagnosing the type of bradyarrhythmia and heart block in which we will concentrate in our lecture. If the bradyarrhythmia and heart block is not frequent or not present in the resting ECG, Holter monitoring, which is an ambulatory ECG recording, can be done from uh, 24 hours up to 7 days of continuous ECG recording and then interrogation of the device and detection of the intermittent cause of uh, fainting or dizziness as being or coinciding with bradycardia or heart block. In patient with very infrequent symptoms, we can uh, uh, we can start event recording, in which the patient will attach or the uh, uh, the relatives will attach 
the the event recorder to the uh, patient while he is having uh, the attack of fainting and then they press a certain button and the event recorder will start recording then we interrogate the device and discover the type of bradycardia inducing the syncope for the patient in some cases in which we cannot easily find the cause we can do electrophysiologic study in which we measure different conduction velocities in different part of the conducting system through a catheter in, in catheters introduced in the venous system of the patient also we can discover the cause of the bradyarrhythmia and the heart block by doing an echocardiography like in cases of degenerative heart disease in which we find calcification around the aortic valve which is uh, extending usually to the uh, AV node or the bundle of his which is the cause of uh, blocking its function also laboratory tests like uh, thyroid function and uh, electrolyte uh, electrolyte levels can uh, give us a hint on the cause of bradyarrhythmia and heart block in this picture we can see the holter monitor which is a very small device which is strapped to the patient by five or seven electrodes and it can record up to seven days of continuous ECG recording this is the event recorder which is a small device only attached by two wires the relatives or the attendants of the patients can attach it to the patient during the attacks of fainting and press the button to record the uh, electrical activity during the attacks also this is a picture of the catheters during electrophysiologic study in which we introduce different catheters to different parts of the heart like the ventricle the AV node and bundle of his the coronary sinus and the atrium to record different electrical activities of the heart and to induce arrhythmias if we want now let's know how to interpret the ECG first we must know how to measure the times in ECG and what are the normal intervals in the ECG if we see the uh, ECG paper at a paper speed of 25 millimeter per second five big squares will represent one second or thousand millisecond so each big square will be 1000 divided by 5 which equals to 200 milliseconds so the small square will be 200 milliseconds divided by 5 which equals to 4 40 milliseconds the important waves are the P wave which represent the uh, atrial depolarization the QRS wave which represent the ventricular depolarization and the T wave which represents the ventricular repolarization there is normal intervals which are the PR interval which is the interval from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex and its duration or normal duration will vary from 120 milliseconds which are three small squares up to 200 milliseconds which are five small squares and the duration of the QRS will not exceed three small squares which are 120 milliseconds now let's see how to calculate heart rate in ECG if we want to calculate the heart rate we uh, measure the number of large squares between uh, two events and we divide this number by 300 
or we uh, 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 we uh, calculate the number of small squares between two events and we divide this number by 1500 like in this example the the number of big squares between these two QRS complexes is 2 when we divide 300 by 2 it will give us 150 beat per minute when we calculate the number of small squares they will there will be 10 small squares if we want to calculate the heart rate it will be 1500 divided by 10 which will give us the same 150 beat per minute so, based on ECG, what are the types of bradycardia and heart block? The first type is sinus bradycardia in which the heart rate is below 60 beat per minute. The SE nodal block in which there is an abnormality in impulse formation or impulse conduction in the perinodal tissue which is outside the scope of the undergraduates. The AV nodal block, which is either due to an abnormality in conduction in the SA node or the bundle of His. Bundle branch block, in which there is an abnormality in conduction in either the right bundle or the left bundle. First, let's uh, uh, tackle the sinus bradycardia. So, if we have an ECG like this, the first thing to do is to determine the heart rate. Here, first we count the number of the big squares, which will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and let's see 6 uh, 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 big squares. The heart rate in this case will be 300 divided by uh, 6 which will give us 50 beat per minute. So the heart rate here is 50 rate per uh, beat per minute, which is below 60 beat per minute. Also, let's check the PR interval. The PR interval will be one big square, and the big square is 200 millisecond, which is the higher normal for the normal PR interval. Regarding the duration of the QRS complex, it will be here like two small squares, which is about 80 milliseconds, which is less than 120 milliseconds. So in this ECG, the only abnormality is the heart rate below 60 beat per minute, which indicates a sinus bradycardia. Now let's see how the AV nodal block will look like. The key idea here is that the signal is getting through the AV node all the time but taking a little longer than usual and we will call this first degree heart block or the signal is getting through the AV node some of the times and we will call this second degree heart block or the impulse will not go through the AV node and we will call this the third degree heart block. Regarding the first degree heart block, the SA nodal impulse formation and conduction is normal. The conduction of electrical impulse through the atria is normal, so the P wave is normal. But the AV nodal conduction is slower than normal. The normal P our interval should be between 120 milliseconds and 200 milliseconds so if the PR interval is longer than 200 milliseconds this is the first degree heart block then the rest of the conduction through the uh, bundle branches is normal so the QRS is normal here we can see that the PR interval is more than 0.2 seconds or 5 small squares or 200 milliseconds. So 
the PR interval from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS is more than 200 milliseconds. The QRS is normal. Here in this picture, we can see that there is a P wave, PR interval, QRS, and T wave. The heart rate is 1, 2, 3, 4. So 300 divided by 4 equals 75 beat per minute. But here we can see that the PR interval is more than one big square so this is uh, this strip is showing a first degree heart block also in this example the PR interval is one big square and one two three small squares which is eight small squares which equals to 320 milliseconds which is larger than 200 milliseconds so what is the clinical significance of first degree heart block it has no clinical significance it needs no treatment but we should check this patient frequently for fear of progress of this block to second or third degree heart block Regarding second degree heart block, it is divided into three types. First, Mopitz type 1 or Winkbach heart block, Mopitz type 2 or 2 to 1 AV block. Second degree heart block Mopitz type 2 or Winkbach heart block was discovered by the German uh, physician Carl Friedrich Winkbach in 1899 in which the conduction through the AV node is progressively delayed until one beat is dropped. In second degree uh, Moppets type 1 PR interval prolongs with each beat until a dropped beat is seen. The PR interval is not constant after each dropped beat, the PR interval is normal and the cycle starts again. As we can see here, the PR interval at the beginning of the recording is normal. In the second cycle, the PR interval prolongs more. In the third cycle, the PR interval prolongs more and more. By the third cycle, the P wave occurs, but there is no QRS conduction here. And then the P wave comes at its uh, time, followed by short PR interval one more time and normally conducted QRS. In this rhythm strip, we can see that the intervals between the QRS is not constant, so there is grouping. The PR interval here is five small squares, which a high normal for the PR interval. The second cycle, the PR interval is prolonged and the QRS is normal. The third cycle, the P wave is not followed by QRS, so one QRS is dropped. Then the fourth cycle, the P wave is coming normally, and the PR interval again is normal. The following cycle, the PR interval is prolonged, and the next cycle, the P wave is not followed by a QRS. So there is a gradual prolongation of the PR interval until one is dropped. And then the PR interval is short again because there is recovery in the conduction in the AV node. Here the disease is usually in the AV node and not in the bundle of his. 
So what is the clinical significance of the uh, uh, Moppets type 1 Winkbach uh, uh, type of second degree uh, heart block? The patient is usually slightly symptomatic with some lethargy and confusion. There is no uh, pacing needed in this case because the disease usually in the uh, uh, AV node and the disease in the AV node usually is recoverable. These patients should be closely follow up because uh, this type of heart block can progress to a higher degree of heart block. Second degree heart block Moppets type 2. Here the conduction through the AV node is constant, meaning that there is no gradual prolongation of the PR interval. But occasionally and without warning, one P wave is not conducted. As we can see here in this example, in, in the first cycle, the PR interval is normal. In the second cycle, the PR interval is normal. In the third cycle, the P wave is not conducted to the ventricle as there is no QRS following the P wave. Then the P wave is coming in its usual time with a normal PR interval and the cycle will continue again. In this rhythm strip, we can see that in this cycle, the PR interval is normal. In the following cycle, the PR interval is still normal. In the third cycle, the P wave is not conducted to the ventricle. Then followed by a cycle with normal PR interval. The following cycle is also normal. And in the third cycle, there is a drop in conduction to the ventricle without prolongation of the PR interval and so on so. So the uh, conduction is interrupted suddenly from the uh, atrium to the ventricle without gradual prolongation and this characterizes the disease in the bundle of His. So what is the clinical significance of uh, the uh, uh, Moppets type 2 second degree heart block. So what is the clinical significance of the uh, uh, type 2 second degree heart block or MOPS type 2? It is clinically significant as the disease occurs in the bundle of his and usually the patient is treated with a pacemaker implantation and it can easily progress to third degree heart block. Now, what about the second degree heart block with 2 to 1 conduction? Usually, we are not able to classify whether this is a Mobitz type 1 or Mobitz type 2. It is a particular type of second degree heart block. The ratio of the B to QRS is 2 to 1. Here we can see the following. The first cycle, the P wave is conducted with short PR interval followed by a P wave which is not conducted followed by a P wave which is conducted normally and then it is followed by a P wave which is not conducted so for each two P waves there is one QRS that's why it is called two to one conduction so in this condition we cannot determine whether this is a, a, a less severe type of disease as in cases of second degree Mobitz type 1 or more advanced degree of disease of second degree heart block as in Mobitz type 2 as there is no second cycle which will show that there is a prolong gradual prolongation or there is a sudden drop of the P wave. So, what is the clinical significance of this type of heart of second degree heart block? The clinical significance is undeterminable. 
uh, this will be associated with symptoms like dizziness or lethargy as the degree of block is higher than the other types. Sometimes the treatment will be pacemaker and this patient should be followed up closely as, as this patient can progress easily to third degree heart block. And now what about the third degree heart block or what is called the complete heart block? There is a complete failure of AV nodal conduction. So there is no impulses from the sinus node will pass through to the ventricles. Some parts of the conducting system will take over as a pacemaker of the heart, it, uh, uh, which is called the escape rhythm. It can, it can sometimes happen in the uh, junction or the bundle of his. Here the escape rhythm will be narrow or it can happen in the ventricular uh, myocardium. Here the escape rhythm will be wide and the heart rate will be slower. In the third degree heart block, the P wave rate is normal. The ventricular rate usually is slow and the ventricular complexes may be broad uh, if the escape uh, uh, rhythm is uh, idioventricular, as we said before, and there is a complete dissociation between the P waves and the QRSs. In this example, we can see that the P wave is going in regular manner, and sometimes it is buried inside the QRS, and QRS is going in a different manner and there is no relation between the P waves and the QRSs. As we can see here, the heart rate is 1, 2, 3, 4. It is not bradycardic, so the, the uh, ventricular rate is above 60 beat per minute and the atrial rate is in a different rate and regular and there is no relation between the P's and the QRS's. So this is a third degree AV block. What is the clinical significance of the third degree AV block? Usually the patient is having symptoms of low cardiac output the patient is confused, dizzy, with low blood pressure. It can lead to standstill, ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation, what is called the stock Adam attacks with loss of consciousness. The treatment is pacemaker. Then we come to the bundle branch block. The first type of bundle branch block here is the right bundle branch. In this example, we can see that the heart rate is above 60 beat per minute as 1, 2, 3 we, uh, uh, divided by uh, 300 divided by 3, it will equal 100 beat per minute. So there is no bradycardia. The PR interval is less than one big square so it is normal the qrs duration here is more than three small squares so there is some kind of bundle branch block here we can identify the right bundle branch block by the following if we look at v1 we will see an m pattern which is called the rsr pattern in v1 and a wide S in V6 and this characterizes the right bundle branch the M pattern in V1 in this example we can see that the heart rate is above 60 beat per minute the PR interval here is normal it's about uh, one big square. The QRS duration is more than three small squares, so it is more than 120 milliseconds. 
but, but here we can see the M pattern in V6 which characterizes the left bundle branch M pattern in V6 and white S in V1 which characterizes the left bundle branch now let's have a quiz in this ECG strip we can see the RR interval is not constant so we will expect that this strip will be uh, a second degree heart block either Mobitz type 1 or Mobitz type 2 so we will check the PR interval here it is one big square which is normal in the second cycle it is more prolonged in the third cycle it is not conducted to the ventricle and then it shortens again the following cycle the PR is prolonged and in the third cycle it is more prolonged in the fourth cycle it is completely dropped and not conducted so the diagnosis will be second degree heart block uh, Mopitz type 1 or Winkbach heart block in this rhythm strip we can see that the QRS intervals are regular there is no grouping the number of big squares between the uh, uh, R waves nearly is 7 big squares which means that the heart rate is 300 divided by 7 which equals 42 beat per minute so there is a bradycardia then the P wave is normal the PR interval is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 small squares which is normal followed by a QRS then the following P wave is not conducted to the ventricle then the the next P wave coming with normal PR interval and a normal QRS the following P wave is not conducted and then the following P wave is coming with normal PR interval and QRS and the the P wave coming after it is not conducted so one P wave is conducted and one P wave is not conducted this is a 2 to 1 block which is second degree heart block of 2 to 1 type in this rhythm strip we can see that the R R intervals are regular there is three big squares between each RR and that will be 300 divided by 3 equals to 100 beat per minute when we look for the P wave we see a small deflection following the T wave which is considered to be the P wave and the PR interval is very prolonged but eventually it ends into a QRS so there is prolongation in the AV nodal conduction here the same happens in the next cycle and the same happens in the following cycle and the following cycle and the following cycle so this is a this strip is showing first degree heart block This 12 lead ECG is showing a regular RR interval. The number of big squares between the R waves is 300, so uh, is 3, so that the rate is 100 beat per minute. The P wave is here, and the PR interval is about 5 smaller squares which is normal 
the QRS duration here is nearly about four small squares which is about 160 milliseconds so there is prolonged QRS when we look at V1 we can see the M shape pattern which indicates right bundle branch block and we can see here in V6 a wide deep S wave so this is a right bundle branch block now to the treatment of uh, heart block first in acute situations if the patient is stable we should admit the patient and start monitoring the patient for fear of increase or advance in the degree of heart block if the patient is unstable the patient should be monitored and we should insert a temporary pacemaker we should monitor the patient and during that time you should remove the offending agent if the patient is taking certain medications like beta blockers calcium channel blockers it should be stopped for the proper duration if there is electrolyte disturbance should be treated if there is hormonal disturbance like uh, hypothyroidism the patient should get replacement therapy uh, etc in cases in which there is no uh, uh, temporary uh, offending agent the patient should undergo pacemaker implantation we have two types of pacemaker a single chamber pacemaker in which the pacing uh, uh, will happen only on the right ventricle and the dual chamber pacemaker in which the pacing can uh, uh, take place in the atrium and in the ventricle here we can see the uh, temporary pacemaker with the external pacemaker and the electrode attached to it this electrode will go to the right ventricle through the femoral vein usually to uh, unstable patients before insertion of the permanent pacemaker the second picture will show the single chamber pacemaker here is the generator and the electrode inserted through the subclavian vein to the right ventricle and the pacing occurs only on the right ventricle and the ECG showing a wide QRS and a pacing spike preceding every QRS and this concludes our presentation thank you and good luck